are Republican lawmakers across the country from Texas to Florida and everywhere in between and outside of that. Where they're pushing a lot of bills and potential laws that would silence discussion about gender identity, about sexual orientation, any of these types of things. Just because they need to have this cultural fight that they think everyone's concerned with, maybe their voters are. So first off, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, he's calling for parents of transgender children to be investigated for child abuse. You may have heard about this, but there's some responses to this now. So first of all, Greg Abbott, he sent a letter to the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, instructing the agency to investigate the families of transgender children as potential child abusers if their kids are receiving gender affirming medical care. That's a model of treatment that the Texas Medical Association, the Texas Counseling Association, and the Texas Pediatric Society agree is the best approach to caring for transgender children. Now, um, some of the folks that could be affected by this are terrified by the uh, the uh, the potential what would be consequences for loving their children. Uh, here's one particular video of of one transgender child who's talking about what uh, she may experience. Hi, I'm Kai Shapley, and I would like to say that the reason why anti-trans movement is bad is because things like this directive could separate families from each other. It would not be good. It would affect people in ways that are beyond fixable. and. To those of you who are trying to help, I would love to say that whatever your gift is, please use it. If you're a writer, write. If you're a singer, sing. So there's her perspective there about her life, who she is. Um, now, by the way, a lot of things that they're pushing all this is based off of a lot of misinformation. Let's so look into what they're saying as far as this irreversible treatments and child abuse that they're uh, pushing here. So using, pu uh, by the way, puberty blockers is one of the things that they would use on younger uh, folks. Uh, so using puberty blockers to treat gender dysphoria, the clinical term that describes a mismatch between gender someone was assigned at birth and the gender with, uh, with which he or she identifies is not unusual. That's according to standards of care from the World Professional Association of Transgender Health. The idea behind the treatment is that by delaying the onset of puberty with reversible drugs, children who are experiencing gender dysphoria are able to have more time to understand their gender identity before their body undergoes irreversible changes. Um, so. Uh, let's let's first start there, because again, we have some of the misinformation. We also have the uh, the laws and the and the things that Greg Abbott and his legislations are trying to push on this. Um, and again, I feel like it goes to not really things that they're pushing that they really believe in, Jackson. It's just more about how can we get people to be angry or scared about something? You know, you need us to save you. Well, I think that you know, obviously. Everyone watching this is in agree in agreement, but this really is an extreme position to be so unsatisfied with the way people choose to live their lives or the way people go about experiencing who they are as to separate them from their families and send them where to some Jesus camp or some state camp to set them straight. Um, and I think what's important is is that, you know, and, and we were just talking about this um, uh, with uh, Dr. Richie yesterday, but you know, we really, really need to anticipate that Republicans will do things like in Roe v. Wade. They're doing things like this in Texas. They're already passing abortion bans. And so just the general authoritarian approach that they're taking is going to continue to escalate. So it's important that we stay in the fight because this is not an isolated incident. They're gonna keep going with this for sure. Well, speaking of going with this, as I mentioned, Florida, Ron DeSantis' state down there. Let's jump down to this particular example of attacking. Um, <laughs> The same group potentially. So there's also that don't say gay bill. Again, you guys have heard about this, but there's updates because the spokesperson decided to make a nice analogy about who would actually be against their bill here. So first off, let's review the bill. It's designed to limit how the LGBTQ community is discussed in public school classrooms by restricting conversations considered instruction, particularly related to the youngest elementary children. But those limitations could be felt in higher grades as well. So this bill. It allows parents to sue school districts if they're not privy to situations related to their children or if their students are encouraged to have discussions on sexual orientation and gender identity. Um, so again, as Ron DeSantis would say, we're giving the power back to the parents. Sometimes the parents um, abuse their children, sometimes the parents uh, oust their children. There's many uh, LGBTQ um, uh, 
kids from that community that end up homeless after they're kicked out. Uh, um, you're not my kid anymore, all these things happen. So if a kid feels more comfortable talking about who they are in a different setting, we're gonna eliminate that and make sure we snitch on them to their parents so that whatever befalls them then happens. So by the way, I mentioned his press secretary. This is what she tweeted out about some of the pushback on this bill. The bill that liberals inaccurately call don't say gay would be more accurately described as an anti-grooming bill. So if you're against the anti-grooming bill, you're probably a groomer, or at least you don't denounce the grooming of four to eight year old children. Silence is complicity. This is how it works, Democrats, and I didn't make the rules. Um, okay, so there's this obsession with um, anybody who believes that there's such a thing as someone who's gay, that they're all about grooming young folks to do whatever to them. Yet we still have these uh, examples of from uh, conservative pundits to, to politicians who say all this on the face of this, then we find they've got a stash of child porn on their computers or they've run off and they've got this gay lover and they're trying to hide this. It happens a lot of times, but they'll keep pushing this. Oh, you're just, you're all for grooming children, you must be child molesters. But we keep seeing it happen exactly the other way. Or, or have we done anything about these priests yet? <laughs> That <laughs> children for and, uh, decades. How many billions of dollars does the uh, Catholic Church have they paid out in, in hush money and settlements? I can't remember how many, but it's it's quite a lot. But yeah, you know, I think uh, this general approach it comes from a place where people feel like you know their own urges, they're victims of some type of societal influence, and therefore they have to purge it out. They are trying to purge it out of themselves, and they believe that somehow. That's not who they are, but they were influenced to be that way. And so they just project it out into the world. But again, at the end of the day, this is just all about spreading fear. And not just fear for this particular issue, but just fear of authority. Well, and again, and by the way, you can always tell once once the midterm election is over, how much you're gonna hear about these things. Remember we had the, the, mm -hmm. the, the scary caravan of, of Latinos coming from the South, it ended yeah. season over. All of these scare tactics, all these things that you're supposed to vote on because you're afraid of the target. It ends as soon as the election's over. Remember that. If you believe what they're saying now, think of, try to pay attention if they're still talking about it after the midterms are over, especially if they're successful.